I'm going to go over and look at how to play the lead breaks in the song and the band played on by Saxon. Now this isn't one of the more famous kind of rock or metal songs, but I think you'll agree, well hopefully, that that lead is just fantastic and awesome underrated lead. I also want to look a little bit at the nuances in this and how to get it sound a bit more authentic and a bit more ballsy. So enough talking, I'll just jump into it. We're starting off with this bend, classic bend, E minor pentatonic shape right, 15th fret on the D bend and up a tone. Here's where the nuances come in right from the get go. So we've got vibrato, so we're bending up to the note and then putting a bit of vibrato. So here I'm holding the bend and uh, kind of releasing it a little bit then returning it back to pitch. Uh, you can come into this note with a rake or a partial pinch if you want. Then we have classic kind of blues, like so 12 on the E, down to 15 on the B, uh, pulling off to 12 on the B. And then bend on the 14. Start in between the blues note and, this, uh, and the kind of tonic note, the 16th, down to 12. And then 14 on the D. So do that once more. Then we're up to the 15th fret on the high E. Again, full tone bend, and you want to put the same type of vibrato on it because that really makes it sing. So. Then we're bending uh, on the 17th fret up a tone, returning it down to the 15, 17 on the B, down to the 15, down to the 16 on the G. So I'll do that once more. And I'll recap it from the start slowly. So after this, we play this note once and we're sliding up to the 18th from the 16th. Sounds weird and out of key, but the context works really well. Up to 17 on the B, and we get 19 on the E, and you want to bend this up to 21 three times. And then you want to bend up to 22. Now, I've got quite a lot of tension on these strings, so what I'm tending to do is just slide up a fret. It's cheating, but it makes life a lot easier. It means I can do it more consistently. Sliding up to the 20th fret for that final bend and just doing a tone. So I'm going... Because in this note, you also want to put vibrato on it. And because of the tension I've got on this guitar, it's very difficult to bend up and put good vibrato on it as well. Going from here is a bit easier. Um, so that band bit, sorry, uh, and a vibrato. Recap from the start again. Right, after that we got this little phrase. So I'm going 19 down to 17 on the E. 19 down to 17 on the B, except there's a little, just a semitone bend on the 19, release, and then down to 17, so that bit, uh, I'll go to the next phrase, so I'm up at the 15th fret on the B, pulling off to 12, going for the blues note, that 15th note on the G, down to 14, down to 12, so, so we've got pull off, play, play, pull off, then down to 14 on the D. Again, I'll we'll go from the start. I got an accidental pinch there up here uh, just because I was digging in because that's a really key thing to the solo as well. I've used nice pick attack, nice strong strokes. Anyway, so we're going. Next, we've got a bit of legato. Uh, in fact, I should mention when we're going. On that note, when you go to the 14th, you really want a pronounced strong vibrato, and I'd suggest pulling down on the string to get that almost kind of Zach Wilde. 
you know, that really, really wide vibrato. Still try and keep it controlled. Anyway, then it's a legato. So we're doing a kind of trill. Hammer on from the 12 up to the 14, and then pull off. Back to the 12. Same idea, going 12 to 11. So this sliding down. Then 14, 12, 14. On the D. And I'll go from the top. Again, nice bit of vibrato when you land on that 14th fret on the D. Then I kind of slide down, and we've got this chromatic thing, this uh, 987 on the D. And you want to do kind of partial pinches here, so rather than it being a full on pinch harmonic, you just want to kind of. So the ones I'm going for are kind of around here. It's a very kind of shanker thing to do, so instead of it being a full on kind of squealy, it's just a little thing. Yeah, so just chromatic thing there, uh, 987 as I said. A microtonal bend, you know, the kind of bluesy one. Fifth fret on the D. And we're going down to seven, down to five on the A. So. And then you want to slide from seven up to nine on the D. Up to seven on the G. Eight on the B. And then we resolve really nicely to E, the ninth fret on the G string. Then you can finish off with a nice power slide thing. So take that from the very start. That's the other one. Sometimes the end, the first one ends with a kind of power slide, but after that ends with a dive bomb. And I think the best way to do is for me uh, when you've gone is to rather than trying to hit the the note with your uh, plectrum, I tend to grab my bar when I'm holding that note, and then just use my thumb to sort of hit this Louis. Because then this hand's got less to worry about. You don't have to get both. You just kind of go and pick up the bar because mine's normally kind of floating quite loosely. I'm not the biggest Saxon fan in the world, but I do think that's a pretty awesome song, which is this really colour lead. Um, fortunately, the video is cut off here so you can see the fretboard and you can't see the horrendous guitar faces I was making while playing. I could feel them and they were pretty bad. If you're interested in Saxon, the band, I'd suggest checking out the song Lionheart off the Lionheart album. That's a bit of a killer as well. Um, other than that, I'm not too hot on them. I've got a couple of albums, but uh, a band played on a line heart, the ones that jump out at me. As always, hopefully you guys have found this video useful. Uh, please consider to like, share, comment, subscribe if you feel so inclined. Cheers, guys.